to the Scaling Japan podcast, a podcast about how to grow your business from one hundred thousand dollars and beyond. And beyond in the land of the rising sun. Welcome to the Scaling Japan podcast. I am your host Tyson Batino, and we have a very, very special guest for our second episode. I have Rina Sakuraba. And most people never get a chance to listen to a person at a CHRO level talk about what exactly HR is. So I would really like to dive deep into what role HR should have in an organization, because most entrepreneurs are not blessed to have someone so great as you on their team. So Rina, could you please give an introduction to yourself? Sure, but. Thank you for introducing me to the audience today, Tyson. And it's an honor to be invited over to speak around this topic. And this is really dear to my heart. I come from multiple company experience, and until this、uh, June this year, and、um, after that, I became an independent founder of my company. Right now, it's called Sango Co Creation. And before that, I held in the role of the senior director level in multinational global companies, including GE, Allianz, and Rosetta Stone, and、uh, in Japan and beyond Japan, in Singapore, in Germany, and in the U.S. And it's such an honor to be invited over to speak about what the and the HR structure can be implemented in different phases of the organizations, and I hope that we can have more conversation that is meaningful for everybody. I have corporate experience working in HR for a big corporation in Japan, but it wasn't until I met you that I had the realization like this is HR, or this is what HR was meant to be. So I think the audience, like you're going to be in for a treat today, because you pretty much will not get an opportunity to listen to someone like Rina talk about HR. And、I'll, just to clarify one thing,、uh, how do you spell Sango Creation, and what is your website? So it's interesting because I just write three five, and in Japanese we read it Sango. So it means a lot of things, and it means that three five happen to be an universal,、um, mysterious numbers across the universe, and it comes across with three and five most of the times. And also, sango means the 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 coral reefs in Japanese, and coral reefs comes with lots of diversities. I'm talking about more than two thousand. Coral reefs only available in the sea around Japan. So I'm talking about diversities. And three and five actually happens to be my grandfather's name as well, who passed away when I was three, and who used to travel all across the world. And、uh, also, he was a very good inspirational icon for me as well. So all together, I wanted to name Sango and、uh, with different meanings. But I wanted to create the other community and society for the diversity to come together and co-create with each other. That is the other meaning of my company's name. You can check it with the other three five co-creation. You can just put it into the other Google and Sango co-creation homepage will pop up. I had an idea of what your reason was for choosing it, but I didn't know it went that deep. And it's interesting how. Well, let's say you know coral connects to each other, and how that number connected to many things in your past. But、uh, yeah, let's dive in. And my first question was: I know everyone knows the word HR, but I don't think most business leaders understand it. So, as an HR professional, like, what is your definition of HR, and what is your role and mission mission in an organization? Now, thank you for the great question. And、uh, when I started my HR career for the first time, after my career as a salesperson and then the marketer, I had an opportunity to be introduced into this new area called HR. And I started wondering, like, okay, what is HR? It calls human resources. And sounds really scary, doesn't it? Because human yeah, it does、resources. sound really scary. Yes, <laughs> and I started digging into it. I just got to realize that human resources are the source of everything about the the company or organization. Because without human beings or human resources, nothing can be happening. 
and with a great mission and great vision and great values. And if they are up there, but if there's no human resources to run with it and run around it and run、uh, for it, nothing is going to be realized. So how I define it is around you know, the human resources are the foundation of the energies of accelerating the growth of the company and achieving towards you know, the goals of the other company and the missions. Embedded with the the hearts of、uh, each human resource available in the organization, so that's how I see. And any specialist who specializes in HR is a specialist to tap into the potential and start believing in the in the possibilities of these human resources and how to help them flourish around their potentials from the compensation benefit point of view, maybe. From the other recruiting point of view, maybe, and from the other guidelines and rules point of view, or even I have always come as you know, the HR business partnership. So as a business partner, maybe. So they have different specialties, but I think it's all about believing in the possibilities and tapping into the potentials of these human resources to realize you know, the visions and missions and values of the company. That's how I see it. Yeah. Well, the thing that I really learned from you is that the role of HR is to bridge the people and the business goals. And if that's not in place, oftentimes you have, let's say, internally things can be chaotic, and you know it'd be hard for the company to get momentum when everyone is just kind of running all over the place. That's right. And, and I also want to know, like,、uh, so there's a lot of positions in HR. Like, you know, there's HR generalist. I see like HR manager. Sometimes HR director, CHRO, you know, chief of human resources, and like、uh, so, there's all these positions. But could you break them down, like what the various positions and like what kind of skills CEO or business owner can expect from someone at each of those levels? That's a good question. And、uh, just on the side note, I always didn't like the the name head of HR because it sounds really scary. <laughs> It's like human resources heads. So it sounds really scary to me to visualize that, just the name of it. But just putting that joke aside, I believe that how you call certain positions changes as the organization and the world is evolving with the changes and with needs of、uh, HR and what kind of HR partner you would like to have as a partner to your business as a CEO or CXO level. So basically, fundamentally, if you say HR generalist and HR manager, head of HR, most of them are talking about someone who covers、uh, quite a bit of ground and are not specialized in one areas. For example, recruiting, training, or payroll, or compensation, or benefits, or HR operations, and so on and so forth. So people tend to use generalist or manager or head of HR to mean that this person is not a specialized in one area kind of HR person, but broadly covering the the whole grounds, and they tend to use it more in the supervision role as well. And、uh, in many companies, they still call the, these more general coverage positions. As HR generalist and HR manager and head of HR, possibly to look after the whole organization of HR team. Now, CHRO position is a bit different because it says C, so it is a C-suite positions, and usually many companies give this title to the board of directors or executive officers position, and. Actually, many companies decided not to use the word HR anymore because, as it says, human resources. And、uh, it used to be like that when the capitalism was in the mainstream. And the, these days, we just realized that the world is changing towards a different direction. So they replace HR with people these days. So、uh, I, I see, chief people chief, officer. Chief people officer, yes. And there's some.、Um, Global、uh, renowned companies they call them people partner, people operation,、uh, chief people officer, people manager. So it seems that 
HR seems to be an outdated uh, keywords anymore in the new modern world. That's how I see. So now I can see why like a business owner or a CEO probably needs to consult with someone like you about what exactly HR is, because it could mean so many different things to so many different organizations. That is correct. That is correct. And I would say that, you know, nothing is wrong or right about the other definition. It's just different. Most important thing is that what makes sense to you and uh, you want the other HR partner for the sake of what? I believe that you could start with that question and uh, whatever the other HR organization you need or HR partner you need, but you could start with those two questions for yourself first. Gotcha. And I know there's also some, or there's a lot of positions within HR. Like I think someone who might be in charge of compensation and benefits, CB or recruitment. Are there any other types of specialty positions within HR or the people department? Yes. So the specialist positions are becoming quite diverse these days. And the ones that have been around for a while is around learning and development. So it used to be called training. But these days, uh, it's not about only facilitating some trainings, but it's actually learning and development. And what is the difference between learning and development is learning is as it is, learning for the purpose. But development is they just don't know what potential they still have. But learning and development specialist is expected to create an opportunity for everybody to discover their potentials. And that discovery phase is called development. So hence, it's called learning and development these days. Another specialist area is called talent management. Now, talent management is around spotting these high potential talents way before that person himself or herself spot himself or herself. And, and make sure that these people are grown into two to three or even more years to go into grow into the, um, the critical positions in the future. So it's about the discussion around how can we as one company or one leadership team to talk about who these people are and how to help them to be developed. So talent management specialists specialize in facilitating those discussions. The newest one I really like is the, the data analyst these days. Oh, now, really? Yes, I believe that you are very familiar with this area, Tyson, because you are very good uh, in researching and data analysts. But in HR as well, the position started to be created about five years back in one of those uh, human resources um, services companies like Recruit and uh, any other companies who have humongous amount of data, but they just don't know how to dig deep in it. So they started to hire the, the data analysts or data, data scientists to really tap on the, the data points around people. And uh, that really helped them to develop the, the services and effective services to serve the, the customers more. So that may be a new position and which can be quite new to people's ears. Uh, it makes sense because I've noticed uh, since I've done marketing, like I'm familiar with uh, Net Promoter Score. But I know recently these days they've come up with ENPS, Employee mm -hmm. Net Promoter Score and a variety of other metrics to manage the engagement of your staff. In our audience, uh, we do have like country managers, startup owners, founders, and people growing their business. But I guess that if you could answer it, if you know, like at what point should they bring on dedicated HR generalists? And at what points do you think they'll need to bring in like a senior level person? to help with their HR operations? Well, I get this question quite a bit from different uh, CEOs of, at different uh, levels of the company and uh, different sizes of the company. My recommendation is to really have a conversation around the two questions that I asked you earlier. What do you need to achieve your 
goals and uh, visions and uh, missions of your own company and business right now. And then the na next question is, why do you need the HR functions for the sake of what? So those are the two questions that I would strongly recommend to have answers around. If you feel that you're at the stage of having the, uh, the HR operation up and running, the basics, I wouldn't recommend to hire the quite senior director or chief HR officer level candidate because they tend to have expectations to have a multiple team members in the team to drive multiple topics together rather than more hands-on creating the operations and the mechanism and uh, making sure the, the basics are in place. In that kind of case, I would recommend you to hire more generalist and who can cover uh, many crowns and uh, perhaps like one area of uh, a little bit deeper specialty as well, but basically covering HR and also possibly general admin staff as well. But if you're at the end of a different phase and you have a few HR people who can do recruiting and who can do payroll, and perhaps you want someone to tap on the more talent-focused agendas, like uh, talent management and learning and development, and oversee the, uh, the whole HR team, I would recommend for you to hire a manager or even the higher director role, and who are passionate about driving the, uh, the topics with the team and across the organization. So it really depends on the answers to those two questions, Tyson. Gotcha. And I did have one recommendation for the audience. You're considering bringing on an HR generalist. Uh, you should probably not expect them to be legal experts in HR. They should definitely provide, have a labor lawyer on retainer. And it's not that pricey to help them out. So that's uh, just my recommendation. Like what you're listening to and ready to scale your company? Let Tyson coach you and your team to make the jump. You can find more information about our coaching and advisory services at www.scalingyourcompany.com. Now, back to our podcast. Rena, you've helped many, many organizations. But in your experience, what are some common reasons why HR or the people department cannot carry out its function or mission? Well, like any other functions and missions, and the HR function is not always perfect, as others, others are. And the common reasons, that's a tough question, but I would say the expected outcomes uh, from the business uh, point of view and expected outcomes from the HR point of view, when these two sides did not talk at the beginning of agreement phase, Usually, they go different ways and realize that they were going towards different ways. And uh, when the box was open and everybody gets surprised, like, whoa, I didn't know that you were going that way. No, I thought we agreed to go that way. So there will be lots of conflicts and uncomfortable situations. And hence, that can be a common reason for HR to keep driving the agenda and that was not um, necessarily the, the main focus of other functions, including the business. So my advice to the CEOs and also the head of HR to have a lot of conversations around why do you need these initiatives for the sake of business? Or why do we need to drive these uh, initiatives for the people in the organization? So. I would strongly recommend to have a thorough discussions and conversation. Even the healthy conflicts would be very helpful to have deep conversations around what would be meaningful to drive the, these initiatives hand in hand between the HR and other functions. And that way, there will be no one who is failing or going different directions and people get surprised and you get frustrated. So that initial agreement is definitely fundamental. Thanks for sharing that. And as yourself, you have a long career in helping organizations with their staff and teams. 
And so how can a HR partner like yourself, you know, someone who bridges HR and business goals, help a country manager or a CEO with growing their company? This is really a common mistake sometimes that HR partner and the other business CEO tend to have different opinions around. And I'm glad that you brought this up. It sounds easy, but reality shows it seems difficult. There are two reasons for that. In any other functions, you tend to be working vertically, not horizontally, as the other company keeps growing. It used to be only five people and now grows into 20 and 100 and 500 and 1,000. And more, each function gets siloed and you get really focused on the vertical goals and the missions and visions. And you stop talking to other departments because you're so siloed. And uh, this is the uh, good example of HR partner always having in mind that uh, start working horizontally again and tend to um, have the narrow-minded person. That person needs to broaden their mind uh, consciously by reaching out to different functions and testing the water, having conversation with the business leaders and checking with the CEO if our agenda is serving the the whole company initiative, not the the HR initiative. So having the more horizontal mind with awareness and uh, with the consciousness will help the HR partner to be aligned with the other business agendas and strategic agendas all the time and putting the other energy of the other HR team into the goodwill and the good goals and uh, and achievements. And that will bring the other HR team to be more confident of their initiatives and their impact to the company. That's how I see. Thank you very much. So I'm pretty sure this question is on the back of everyone's mind. So how can a CEO or business owner attract a great senior level HR director or people person? Well, I can't really speak for other people, but if it was up to me to choose who I want to work with as a partner, I would say that you know someone who sees the, the power of HR in the organization and feels that this is one of the the crucial parts of running the business. I would probably choose to work with a CEO like that rather than a CEO who sees or only knows HR is specialized in payroll and more admin staff and operational staff rather that sees the the HR as the the strategic partner to drive the, the people agendas in the speciality of um, HR arena. So that's the end, the equality of the position of uh, HR and the business. I would probably get excited about working with someone like that to focus on agenda itself uh, from day one, rather than just trying to make our position higher and higher because it starts from minus and then works a lot of time to regain the position of HR a little bit higher to have those main conversation. And it will take another three years. It's a little bit of this disappointing reason for me to join that company, I would say. So I would strongly recommend for any CEO who wants to track HR director or people person to start articulating how important the HR is as the the equal partner to the business or even CEO in that organization. That will be a very appealing point for them. This has been an awesome conversation, or I'll say more of a, I wouldn't say lecture because I'm mainly just listening, trying to absorb everything, but it's been really wonderful listening to you. And uh, yeah, to finish things off, like just tell us about the services you provide and how you help companies. Sure. So I mainly offer two services right now. One is around uh, helping the other company who doesn't have the the HR function at the moment to set up the the, their own HR team. And without the HR team leader to hire and grow the the right people 
I help out those companies and CEOs to set up the new HR function from scratch or even one to 10 scales. The half of it is around the coaching. So I dedicate myself in the three areas of coaching. Uh, one is you know, the one-on-one coaching in the, you know, the executive uh, leadership role or someone who has potential to go into the, you know, the senior leadership role in the future. Second one is about you know, the team coaching. So I coach team with you know, the same mission and purpose, and they're trying to work together as an effective team. And uh, for some reason, they're not. So I'm brought into the, such a team as a team coach. And last but not least, this is a quite rare offer, but I also offer myself as you know, the health and well-being coach as well, which is becoming quite popular in the US, but it's still new in Japan. But I serve as the health and the well-being coach as well. Awesome. And could you tell us again one more time where people can find you? Well, you can find me at www.35callcreation.com. That is the homepage. And uh, also you can find me under Rina Sakuraba at LinkedIn. Those are the two um, good um, entries to reach out to me. And for those uh, listening on Spotify or Apple, uh, you can find the podcast notes at uh, scalingyourcompany.com forward slash podcast and look for the episode with Rina. And we'll have a link to her website and her LinkedIn profile there for you. But thank you so much for coming on the podcast, Rina. It was my pleasure. Thank you, Tyson. Welcome to the end of the podcast. We appreciate you listening to the end of this Scaling Japan episode. And if you would like more great episodes on scaling your business in Japan, please check out www.scalingyourcompany.com forward slash podcast.